Dive into the ominous depths of atomic power as we unravel the chilling intricacies of how a nuclear bomb works. Welcome to this in-depth exploration of the intricate and fascinating world of nuclear bombs. In this video, we'll delve into the atomic structure and radioactivity, the discovery of nuclear fission, the design of fission bombs, and the advancements leading to the development of fusion bombs. So without further ado, let's begin. Atomic structure and radioactivity. Let's embark on a profound exploration of the atomic realm, where the intricacies of nuclear bombs find their roots. At the heart of this journey is the atom, an infinitely small building block comprising protons, neutrons, and electrons. The nucleus, composed of protons and neutrons, forms the atom's core, while electrons orbit this central hub. The balance of protons and electrons ensures an atom's neutral charge. However, this delicate equilibrium can be disrupted, leading to isotopic variations. Consider carbon, with its stable isotope carbon-12 and less common isotopes like carbon-13 and carbon-14, the latter being radioactive. Unstable atomic nuclei, as observed in certain isotopes, engage in radioactive decay, emitting particles known as radiation. This radiation manifests through alpha decay, where a nucleus ejects two protons and two neutrons, beta decay, transforming a neutron into a proton, and spontaneous fission, the splitting of a nucleus. Particularly noteworthy is the process of induced fission, a key element in comprehending the inner workings of nuclear bombs. Nuclear fission, delving into the forces that govern atomic nuclei, unveils the phenomena of nuclear fission, a pivotal aspect in the genesis of nuclear bombs. This process involves the deliberate splitting of an atom's nucleus into smaller fragments through the introduction of a neutron. Such a manipulation of unstable nuclei unleashes substantial heat energy and radiation. The credit for unraveling the secrets of nuclear fission goes to Italian physicist Enrico Fermi, who, in the 1930s, showcased that elements subjected to neutron bombardment could undergo transformative changes. Fermi's revelations paved the way for the discovery of slow neutrons and new elements beyond the periodic table. Building upon Fermi's groundwork, German scientists Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann conducted experiments bombarding uranium with neutrons, leading to the identification of radioactive barium isotopes. This pivotal moment ignited a global research frenzy. At Princeton University, Niels Bohr and John Wheeler envisioned a hypothetical model of the fission process, speculating that uranium-235, not uranium-238, was responsible for fission. Nuclear fuel. In March 1940, a breakthrough occurred at Columbia University, affirming Niels Bohr and John Wheeler's hypothesis that uranium-235 was the key to nuclear fission. The subsequent shift of research to the University of Chicago marked a turning point, with Enrico Fermi achieving the world's first controlled nuclear chain reaction beneath the stag field. The rapid progress in understanding nuclear fission paved the way for the development of nuclear bombs, with U-235 emerging as the primary fuel. Uranium-235's unique property of induced fission enabled scientists to expedite the breakdown of atoms a process that would naturally take over 700 million years. The induced fission of U-235 involves the absorption of a neutron by the nucleus, leading to immediate instability and subsequent splitting into two lighter atoms. The ejected neutrons in a properly functioning bomb initiate a chain reaction, creating a cascade of fission events. To optimize this process, uranium must be enriched raising the U-235 content beyond natural levels. Weapons-grade uranium, consisting of at least 90% U-235, became a cornerstone in the design of nuclear bombs. Fission bomb design. Designing a functional fission bomb presents a series of challenges centered around maintaining separate subcritical masses that avoid supporting premature detonation. Critical mass the minimum mass of fissionable material necessary for sustaining a nuclear fission reaction plays a crucial role in bomb efficiency. The challenge lies in bringing subcritical masses together to form a supercritical mass at the moment of detonation. This critical mass 
must provide more than enough neutrons to sustain the fission reaction, leading to the development of two triggering methods, the gun type and implosion triggered designs. In the gun type design, a sphere of U-235 surrounds a neutron generator with a small U-235 bullet removed and placed at one end of a long tube. Explosives behind the bullet propel it down the barrel, colliding with the sphere and neutron generator, initiating the fission reaction. On the other hand, implosion-triggered bombs compress subcritical masses into a sphere through a shockwave created by high explosives. Early designs faced challenges in controlling and directing the shockwave uniformly, eventually leading to the creation of an implosion device consisting of a U-235 sphere acting as the tamper and a plutonium-239 core surrounded by high explosives. This design significantly improved bomb efficiency with the concept of boosting, introduced by American physicist Edward Teller in 1943, further enhancing the explosive power of these devices. Fusion bombs. While fission bombs demonstrated effectiveness, scientists sought greater efficiency through fusion, leading to the development of fusion bombs, also known as thermonuclear or hydrogen bombs. Fusion involves the combination of two atomic nuclei into a single, heavier atom, releasing substantial energy. The primary fuels for fusion bombs, deuterium and tritium, present unique challenges due to their gaseous nature. Overcoming these challenges involves utilizing lithium deuterate, a solid compound, as the principal thermonuclear material. Tritium production, a potential obstacle is addressed by relying on a fission reaction to generate tritium from lithium. A fusion bomb operates on a two-stage design, incorporating a primary fission or boosted fission component and a secondary fusion component. The detonation sequence involves the implosion of the fission bomb, which generates X-rays. These X-rays, in turn, heat the interior of the bomb, initiating the fusion process. The compression shock waves from this process trigger fission in the plutonium rod, leading to the release of radiation, heat, and neutrons. The neutrons, combined with lithium, produce tritium, facilitating deuterium-deuterium and tritium-deuterium fusion reactions. This multi-stage process culminates in a powerful explosion with a significantly higher yield than fission bombs. Nuclear Bomb Delivery Building a nuclear bomb is only half the story. Delivering it to the intended target is equally crucial. The historical context of the first bombs dropped during World War II underscores the improvised nature of early weaponry. The USS Indianapolis transported components and enriched uranium fuel for the Little Boy bomb to the Pacific island of Tinian in July 1945, while the Fat Man bomb components were carried by three modified B-29s arriving in August 1945. A team of 60 scientists flew from Los Alamos, New Mexico to Tinian to assist in the assembly. The Little Boy bomb, weighing 9,700 pounds and measuring 10 feet from nose to tail, was loaded onto the Enola Gay, a B-29 piloted by Calder Paul Tibbets. The plane made the 750-mile trip to Japan and dropped the bomb over Hiroshima on August 6, 1945 at exactly 8.12 a.m. The Fat Man bomb, nearly 11,000 pounds, made the same journey aboard the Boxcar, a second B-29 piloted by Maj. Charles Sweeney, exploding over Nagasaki on August 9th, just before noon. Today, various methods, from gravity bombs carried by aircraft to modern ballistic and cruise missiles, serve as viable delivery options for nuclear weapons. The science behind nuclear bombs is a complex tapestry of atomic physics, engineering, and historical events. Understanding the intricate mechanisms involved provides insight into the destructive power of these weapons and the ongoing efforts to prevent their use. If you found this exploration informative, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in our next video.